regulars and welcome new listeners to the Reese on the Regular podcast. I finally have Sophia on the podcast today. I'm so excited. Hi, guys. <laughs> I'm really, really, really happy to be here. This feels like a dream. I've literally <laughs> been wanting to be on Reese's podcast since we started. My name's Sophia, if you didn't already know. I am a junior as well as Reese at UMass Amherst. That's how we met. We lived on the same floor last year. That's I'm studying. Yeah, I, like I know. Forgot I forgot that. about that too. <laughs> I know. <laughs> and I'm a marketing major. I have a photography business, which is like mm-hmm. literally my personality. It's trait. amazing. <laughs> I do honestly anything like anywhere the wind blows me I do it mainly I want to do weddings in the future but right now I'm kind of doing all sorts of things couples seniors grads headshots creative portraits like really just whatever people ask me for I do so it's really fun and I've been doing that for about like three years now so it's been really really great hopefully I can take it somewhere far in the future after college. I also have a podcast. <laughs> it's called Caught on Camera on Apple and Spotify. Go and listen. Go listen. Hopefully Reese will be on soon. So I stay will. Tuned. <laughs> <laughs> it's really just like lifestyle based, kind of similar to what Reese talks about. But sometimes I do like photography tips, how I started my business, story time, stuff like that. So it's really fun. I really want to be an influencer, guys. <laughs> I have been posting on my TikTok like religiously because I just really want to be famous and I want people to (laughs) know. No, honestly, like I was just saying, I've been contemplating like just dropping everything else. Like influencer. Yeah. The influencer (laughs) lifestyle is honestly just meant for me and race. It really is. Um, So I'm glad we're collabing right now. For sure. I love posting on TikTok and Instagram too. Just even just seeing like Reese's posts about like everything is just like, just it inspires me to post too. Cause like she's like posting like her like oatmeal, her like, like she just like Stop. makes everything look so aesthetic. So like it just inspires me too. No, so but same. It's really great to like have a friend that like has a similar goal and mindset, mm-hmm. you know? Like so. we go out and like we both see something, we're like, photo. And know, I'm like, I, I can't do this with anyone Literally. else. Like no, we're always snapping awesome. pics, always like being an influencer. But we're living in the moment too. Yes. So yes. we have some really fun stuff planned today. We were going to talk about, you know, influencing and all that stuff, but we kind of want to go in a different direction. Mm-hmm. But before going super fast into that direction, I do want to ask a little bit more about yeah. just like how you got started with photography, influencing, like what really drove you to find a passion in that? Yeah. I've always like really loved photography. Honestly, I got a camera, my first camera when I was a freshman and I literally got it just to like take pictures of like myself and like make my Instagram look really good and it wasn't really like for me to take pictures of other people and like be hired for it it was more so just like a take pictures with my friends in like Boston and stuff like right. that I've always loved taking pictures like it's always been like I'm like going out with my friends we have to take pictures first you know yes. like it always is a, like a goal I started taking photos more seriously senior year of high school it was like mid-covid and we didn't really want to go to like O'Connor Studios to get like our me and my friends I'm talking about Mm -hmm. didn't want to go and get like professional photos taken just because like we didn't know what the vibe was going to be like and I had a camera so like why wouldn't we just like take the pictures ourselves you know so I took them of me and my friends and then I posted them on my Instagram and people were like wait can you take mine can you take mine can you take mine And I was like wait okay so people want this like people want me to take their pictures so I'm gonna like do this that's awesome So then I made an Instagram and started posting the senior pictures that I was taking. And slowly, like, people started following me. People wanted family pictures. I was doing, like, creative portraits with my friends. Like, really just anything. And it just really took off then, you know? so fun. Yeah. That's awesome. (laughs) Well, obviously, Sophia's doing amazing. Today, we have prepared some fun holiday topics for you guys. The holidays are coming up pretty soon. And so we're going to be unwrapping wellness with you today, talking about how to handle mental health around the holidays. I have some questions prepared that we'll both answer together. And this should be fun. I think it's going to be good. I'm excited because we (laughs) wanted to take it like a more fun route just because we both like influencing has always been like our passions and stuff. But this time of year like you want to just like relax and stuff this is the best time of year yeah so i'm excited like holiday girl Mm -hmm. i was such a fall girl but me too i'm ready for the holidays Me too, for sure all right so we're gonna start with common holiday stressors so can you think of any just like common holiday stressors that come up around the holidays and how you personally manage them the holidays are hard because when it gets dark early like Mm -hmm. i do not want to do anything anything it's dark at 4 p.m. I'm like, all right, it's time for bed, genuinely. <laughs> so that is a big part of 
me losing motivation and kind of trying to trick myself out of that. I mean, we're going to talk a little bit more about like seasonal depression and stuff like that, Mm -hmm. but getting up earlier and also just like realizing that like everybody else is going through it too. And it's a hard time. Like the holidays can be fun and everyone romanticizes it and makes it seem like such a great time of the year, but it's hard. And like, there comes stress, like with finals, especially Mm -hmm. finals are hard and they're meant to be hard. Kind of just realizing that everybody else is going, is in the same boat as you and you're going to get through this. It's temporary. Talking to your friends, expressing your emotions. I have a therapist, (laughs) which I recommend a hundred percent. It has helped me so much just to, let everything off my chest. I get to talk to her about stuff that like I didn't even know I realized. I get on my call and all of a sudden like I'm spitting facts that like I didn't even (laughs) know about myself. So that is a huge way that helps me to relieve stress around the holidays. Yeah, and I feel like sometimes therapy has like a bad rep for some reason. I know, which which I hate. Yeah. Honestly. Like I think it's such a great thing to do for yourself and just a good way to Figure out more about yourself, too, like Mm -hmm. you were saying. They really just make you realize the unconscious thoughts you're having. Going along the lines of, like, finals and just overall, like, a common stressor is definitely just balance during the holidays. There's so much going on. So many family events, friend events, work commitments, free time. Mm -hmm. Like, you're trying to balance everything. How do you kind of go about keeping that balance? Agreed, first of all. There's (laughs) so many things that you have to juggle, like, whether that be your classes, and then you want to spend time with your friends. You want to make time for your family. Like, it's really, really hard to keep that balance, and I would just say that the main way that I try to keep it is by literally planning out my day, like, to the T, Mm -hmm. like, genuinely, times, of like when I'm going to do which assignment, when are, when they're due, what days do I want to hang out with my family and what days are am I going to make for my friends? Setting your priorities straight almost and realizing like you need to figure out what's important to you and what's more important than other things. Like mm-hmm. is your classes more important than hanging out with your friends? Probably, you know. Right. Yeah, and I feel like I've talked a lot about time management on here before, but just making sure that you are making time for everything, but also considering your priorities and yeah. you know what needs to come first. Also making time for yourself. Yeah. Like you are mm-hmm. the most important person in your life. So if you don't make time for yourself, you're going to get lost in the whole entire process and it it'll just end up bad. You know, give yourself like that hour at the end of the night where like you can really just spend time with with yourself and nobody else and really think about how was my day how do I want to make tomorrow better stuff Mm -hmm. like that finding time for self-care can be really hard during the holidays too I feel like that's the most important time to be taking care of yourself because it should be like such a good time of year you know you don't want to like overwhelm yourself overwork yourself finding time at the end of the night or just having you know a little morning routine where you just have some time to yourself I feel like is so necessary at this time of year kind of going back off of what I said about like it being really dark really early in the day a way that you can kind of work around that is by getting up earlier which Mm -hmm. I hate getting up early guys like genuinely it makes me nauseous almost (laughs) because like I literally hate it like I just am not I'm really a morning person and Mm -hmm. I want to sleep in I'm the same way but I think it's important especially around the winter time where there's not as much daylight to get up earlier and to really enjoy that daylight and the sunlight and take advantage of the time you have during the day to get stuff done Mm -hmm. you know yesterday I got up at six in the morning I had somewhere to go but (laughs) (laughs) not by choice (laughs) it was still dark out when I woke up and I felt nauseous yeah that feels wrong (laughs) this is wrong and I'm warm in my bed but anyways I got up and I I watched the sunrise I rose with the sun it was great and then By like three o'clock, I felt like I had a full day. Like it was the longest day ever. And then it's dark. So then you're like, okay, now I can chill. Like, yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And like, it's rewarding almost because like when you get up early and you like get stuff done and like check Mm -hmm. stuff off your to-do list, like you feel good about yourself. Like you already just feel 10 times better knowing that you completed something. Mm -hmm. Get up early, guys. Do it. (laughs) (laughs) Another stressor that I have in the holidays is just loneliness and... um, (laughs) we're just lonely girls (laughs) I cannot another thing is like I don't know if you've experienced it but I have had losses in my family and like grandparents passing away especially around the holidays is like Mm -hmm. the time that they have passed so it definitely brings up some really really sad emotions something I do to kind of push past that is visit their grave or Mm -hmm. remember the good times I had with them on the holidays and stuff like that and remember that like my whole entire family is going through the same thing so 
put yourself out there with them, you know, talk about it with your parents or with your siblings because they're going through the same thing. Right. And that's such an important time to spend like more time with your family. Mm -hmm. I think like I've talked about this too, like loss brings families even closer. And so like my family, like we had certain traditions that we had, you know, with my grandparents who passed. And so for instance, like my mom, she was just last night baking this wine cake that like her mom made all the time. And it's literally the best cake in the world. But just like, you know, bringing back those traditions to just like remember them by and like making it a happy thing just to kind of ignore that loss in a way and just turn it into more of a positive. I love that. Yeah. Continuing on the tradition just keeps their Mm -hmm. soul alive. I love that. That's amazing. And also just being cautious of other people who might be going through a loss like right now. Mm -hmm. It is such a tough time during the holidays to lose, you know, people who are important to you. So just reaching out to those people if that's something you know is going on. You really never know what someone is going through. So it's kind of important to like not let social media like dictate if a person's okay or not like they could be posting saying that they're like completely fine but like they could be going through a lot so it's important to check in on the people that you love really make them feel less alone because loneliness around the holidays sucks like Mm -hmm. it really does it's a terrible feeling especially when like there's so much joy and cheer around you all you want to do is feel happy Mm -hmm. but remember that it's okay to not be happy all the time loneliness is such a I feel like there's such a stigma around it but like being alone is almost kind of a benefit at times because you get to spend time with yourself like you are like the main character in your life and you're going to be there through your entire life Mm -hmm. so learning to love yourself love your own company is really important this year I've learned to love my own company more than ever like I've just become so independent and I just feel like I've been doing so much on my own and Mm -hmm. like have actually appreciated it if you are going somewhere alone and are like people probably think I'm so weird for like walking alone on the Mm -hmm. street or like sitting alone in a coffee shop no one cares like genuinely no (laughs) one cares when I see people doing that I'm like go off like you're amazing like pop off you know like I'm like you you should be so proud of yourself that you can sit there alone right now like that's something that everybody here wishes they could do so Mm -hmm. take it as like a compliment almost you know like kind of like a like a good thing you know like see the positive in that Mm -hmm. but also don't be afraid to reach out to people if you are feeling lonely don't just be alone well, in those times yeah. you know so we kind of talked a little bit about balance and just having a lot of work commitments and schedules what would be your advice for keeping in routine when you're home for winter break because I know sometimes I come home for a break and especially if it's a long winter break it's kind of tough to stay in the same routine that I was in at school I feel like I like get in some sort of like flow when I get back to school sometimes and then I come home and it kind of throws me off so how do you stay in a routine I thrive off of like routine going back and forth from school and home is super hard because Mm -hmm. school I'm getting up I'm going to class I'm going to the gym at home I'm not doing any of that you Mm -hmm. know like I don't there's not as many responsibilities so it's definitely hard to stay accountable while also relaxing and enjoying so I find that as I said it before I love a good to-do list Mm -hmm. like genuinely thrive off of it and make it fun like make it customizable make it cute make it like something that you want to check those boxes off because like it feels good to check something off your Mm -hmm. to-do list you know yeah and setting those expectations for yourself makes you want to hold yourself more accountable if you're going to tell yourself that you're going to do something like show up for yourself and do it going off of what I said about TikTok, I find that making like the day in my life or making like a day in my life in pictures or just a vlog or something or even just posting on my Instagram story helps me to stay accountable because I'm like, I want people to think I'm being productive. So like, I might as well just be productive, you know? Like That's me. I'm like, okay, I'm sitting in bed. I haven't put anything on my Instagram right now. Like Reese, what can you do? Get up and (laughs) do do something. something. (laughs) Yeah. And I'm like, I don't want to fold my laundry, but it would be really cute and aesthetic (laughs) to fold it for my TikTok. So I'm going to fold my laundry. Iron my clothes real quick. Yeah. (laughs) So, (laughs) kind of just romanticizing it and making it like Mm -hmm. look aesthetic even if you don't think it is like people are like commenting on my tiktok saying oh my god how do you make life in massachusetts like look so like romanticized i'm like it's really not it's just i'm making it look like (laughs) Like that for social media like best most amazing life and it's like i'm kind of living like a very similar life to like most of my friends Mm -hmm. and like people who are at school but i'm just taking advantage of it and romanticizing it in a way Mm -hmm. so which i kind of love because like awesome if we can do it you can do it too you (laughs) know like everyone can do it yeah making things sound more fun than they really are like if you're if you have to like run an errand that you really don't want to do like make it fun by like getting yourself a drink or like Mm -hmm. bringing a friend along or something like that like you can make things fun like that 
So true. Having a to-do list, I mean, I find it so satisfying <laughs> to just, like, check it off throughout the day. So, like, I love that. Yeah. love having schedule. And I guess some advice would just be, like, if that's something you're already using at school, to just, like, not let that fall off when you go home. Continue to have a schedule that you're setting for yourself. As soon as you fall off from it, it's just so hard to pick back up. Yeah. So that would I be agree. my best advice. I agree. Also, having either a morning ritual or prioritizing your sleep schedule Ooh, yes. is a really good way to stay in a routine. Mm -hmm. yep. I would say another tip for me is kind of just figuring out what works best for you in your schedule. It's okay that your schedule might not line up exactly how it did in, at school. Like for me, I find that going to the gym really early at school is right for me because I have so many other tasks to do during the day. Mm -hmm. But when I'm at home, I want to take advantage of the time that I get to sleep in. So I'm going to go to the gym later. So really just like making sure you know that it's okay to have a different routine at school, but just figuring out what works best for you and mm -hmm. just sticking to it. Yeah, that's so true about the gym. Mm -hmm. I feel like now yeah. I, like I always at school I'm always going like super early in the morning but now I'm like trying to take advantage of sleeping in because it's like we never get to do that I know We're and so especially busy. like Reese and I are going abroad uh, <laughs> and like it's gonna like we're not gonna have that much time to sleep all the time no. so no it's sleep. important <laughs> yeah no sleep none sleep when you're dead <laughs> um so it's kind of important to like take advantage of the time now that you have to like chill and relax and regroup especially if your semester has been really hard so far mm -hmm. like take advantage of this like downtime but also don't over take advantage of it and like not stick to a schedule if that makes sense right don't just like sleep in the entire day yeah. type of thing like have a healthy sleep schedule for yourself mm -hmm. where you actually feel refreshed when you're waking up and you're waking up at a good time that you can get things done before it's getting dark out. Yeah, especially sleeping <laughs> in when, it, when it, the, it gets dark at 4 p.m. I oh. feel like, okay, so my day is over now. I wake up at 11. It's dark at 4. I got mm -hmm. like five hours of daylight. Like, it's what? It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, so you really have to manage your time well around this time of year. But also, we keep saying like when it gets dark, like we don't want to do work, but just push yourself that extra inch to like do the work when it's dark out. Like just because it's dark out doesn't mean that like you can't do anything anymore. And also that could be not for you at all. Like some people work better when it's dark out. Some people are night owls. I'm personally not that way. Mm -hmm. So it's hard for me to do work at night. Sometimes I do just need that extra push to say, Sophia, you need to do your homework assignment right now because it's due tonight. Like you just have to do it, <laughs> you, you know? You just have to, you do, just it. Have to do it sometimes. <laughs> don't over push yourself like sometimes I like I'm not a night owl so for me it's like okay I would be way more productive if I just went to bed right now and woke up early yes and did it in the morning yes so it really depends on like what type of person you are in that sense and don't let your schedule affect your sleep like Reese mm -hmm. said you need to prioritize your sleep schedule you should be getting at least like what is it eight hours of sleep eight, a night I always like oh, I always. live by that I'm always like, okay so like let's count this out <laughs> let's <laughs> match sure, it out like, if I go to bed right now <laughs> yeah eight hours really makes me feel rested like mm -hmm. even if I'm getting seven and a half it's like no Reese, yeah you, you need, need that eight. extra 30 minutes yeah right now. so like really make sure you're getting enough sleep because that's how you're not going to be able to function during the day mm -hmm. and also fuel your body like food is fuel that is what's going to help you to push throughout the whole entire day and make it tonight, literally. Speaking of food, the holidays are obviously food filled with great food. Obviously, it is a tough time because if you're trying to maintain a healthy diet and there's lots of holiday food everywhere, you know, you want to stay balanced with that. So what advice would you have for being able to enjoy holiday treats? But staying well, healthy? first, I love a good holiday treat, mm -hmm. like genuinely. <laughs> and I kind of try to remember that this is, like, only, like, a certain time of the year where, like, these treats are going to be, like, available to mm -hmm. me. So, like, take advantage of them and, like, definitely treat yourself and eat them. People aren't going to remember you by, like, what you looked like or what you ate. Like, it's not about that. Like, it's about, like, your personality and stuff. But at the same time, like, you do want to make that healthy balance of, like, am I healthy? Like, am I going to feel good about myself? Am I going to regret this? Am I going to like be mad at myself for eating mm -hmm. this or something so kind of just being mindful when you're taking yeah. in those snacks and also like is this gonna make me feel sick say like chocolate makes you sick or something like don't do that to yourself if you know that it's gonna have a bad outcome yes. you know like that would be me I would not With the <laughs> gluten, the gluten yeah. and dairy. <laughs> but yeah just listening to your body is so important it's not really about not eating this because it's gonna make me look a certain way or mm -hmm. you know really just listening to how it actually makes you feel is the most important part when it comes to this topic but I think just allowing yourself to enjoy it if yeah if it makes you happy and also remember that there's like a bunch of alternatives to 
unhealthy foods that you could turn into a more healthy alternative mm-hmm. everything in moderation is amazing it's perfect mm-hmm. like you know like having like one cookie amazing you're gonna love it and enjoy it but having like 10 like you're gonna feel sick almost you know like yeah but if that works for you then that works for you like do whatever is best for you because you know your body well enough and more than anybody else balance and moderation really be the biggest tip for this one literally (laughs) this could be like a holiday treat or something but really for anything what is something around the holidays that you wish would last year around holiday drinks at starbucks (laughs) 100 because i put that down too 100 percent, no <laughs> doubt about it genuinely not even just the drinks itself the cups yes the cups i need the cups year round genuinely Holiday it drinks makes me everywhere. so much happier and it makes me want to go to starbucks and spend my money so much mm-hmm. more it's just probably bad for me the holiday drinks are just so good and just what's your oh, go-to one. the um sugar cookie latte oh my god so, so good. good so good and now they have like their iced gingerbread like chai. i haven't tried I haven't that i haven't tried it but i keep seeing it and yes, i need to go i have too so the drinks are great but the cups are where it's at like yeah. genuinely they make me so happy i just can't another thing i was gonna say is just like the festivities and like the decor mm-hmm. like just the vibe of the holidays yeah it is that much more special because it's only a, at a certain time of year but at the same time it's like oh, it's midsummer, and I'm like, oh, like, I miss the holidays. Like, I just want, like, a red cup from Starbucks yeah. right now. So, like, certain things like that I do wish would last year round. Or even just, like, the cheer of the Christmas tree in your living room. Like, <laughs> nothing compares to it, genuinely. Mm-mm. Like, sitting on your couch watching TV with the Christmas tree right there is perfect. And I wish I could do it's that amazing. in the summer. Like, literally. I know. And it makes me, like, sad that there's not, like, cute summer decor that you right. can, like, put up in your house. Like, I you know. know? So the decor is definitely a big one for me too. And the Christmas lights, like driving through my neighborhood yes. and just seeing it, like it just instantly makes me happier. It's just literally. like such a fun, <laughs> good vibe time of year. Yeah. And I feel like there's a bunch of neighborhoods, like especially local that go like all out. Mm-hmm. So I love like driving through those. Especially. Yeah. Like the certain houses you remember and yeah. like know them by. Yeah. For, like, With, like the that. huge decorations and stuff. I'm not a big, like my house isn't a big one. Like, we, we put some lights up, but we're not crazy. Yeah. But I love just, like, driving by, listening to my holiday music, just, like, feeling the, the joy. Yes. Yeah. Not only, like, the joy of decorations, but also just it being, like, a season of giving and, like, being with family. Like, I love that that's, like, such a strong thing during that time of year and I, I kind of wish there was like another opportunity for that when it comes towards like the summer you know I agree yeah because I feel like most people look at Christmas as like oh like you get presents you give presents and like I love that aspect of it obviously because like that's great but giving gifts is like such a great love language it is. you know and like it's a way to express your love for someone and really put thought and effort into a gift and I wish that there was more times around the year that are like that where like you have big family gatherings with Thanksgiving. Yeah. Like there's a big family gathering, whatever. Um, especially with like Christmas Eve and Christmas, but then I feel like the whole rest of the year is like, it's like, n- where's my family? <laughs> you know, it's so true. Yeah. So, so yeah, that's another thing. It's just like quality family time mm-hmm. and definitely like value that and take advantage of that. Especially if you're someone who like really likes to hang out with their friends a lot. Like remember that like your family is really, really important and this is the best time of year to spend time with them. A uh, treat that I love are the Pillsbury, like, snowman, like, mm. Christmas-shaped cookies. The best. So good. I saw on TikTok that somebody did, like, four cookies, and then they, like, made an ice cream sandwich oh with it. Oh, my God. So I think or, I like, a cookie that. skillet. That would be so like, fire. Oh, those are the best cookies. Yeah. They just remind me of Christmas like, all the time. why are they so good? I know. And they have, like, Halloween ones, too. They and, have like, them for, like, everything. Yeah. But, but for the some Christmas... reason, they're, like, Snoopy red ones. <laughs> like, why? Why are those so I good? Know. Like, the like Christmas trees. They're just unmatched. Yeah. Stop. Yeah. That's so true. I was going to say, also, just, like, Christmas cookies. Me and my family, we have, like, a whole baking night, like, right mm-hmm. before Christmas. And there's, like, certain cookies we'll make, like, snowballs. They're, oh, I love. They're called. They're so good. I feel like you love baking. I legit love baking, yeah. love cooking. Like, it just makes me so happy. Yeah. yeah I'll bake for you. You'll yeah. eat. I'm not a big baker. I would prefer to sit back and relax and watch. But I like to enjoy them. Yes. For sure. No, but like all the holidays. I will. I will. I'll make you that little cookie ice cream skillet. <laughs> Honestly, all the holiday cookies. Yeah. I wish those were like a year round thing. Literally just every treat in general. Mm-hmm. Like, it's so good. So good. Just a great time. Yeah. <laughs> So after eating all these cookies, <laughs> what are some fun ways that you would suggest to stay active during the holidays? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
I feel like there's so many different ways. Making it fun is really just like the overarching theme for me. Mm -hmm. Like going to a class helps me to like get a more beneficial workout than just like going to the gym by myself because Mm -hmm. like it really pushes me to work harder when like people are around me working just as hard or like someone's telling me what to do. And like I feel like most workout like studios and stuff have like some themed classes like especially at the rec center at school we have like christmas themed spin and stuff like Mm -hmm. that so take advantage of that because i just love working out and christmas music so them combined is amazing yeah and then going off of that maybe make like a christmas playlist or Mm -hmm. something that like will really motivate you to want to work out. I think I might have to make a holiday workout playlist. And That's a good one. Share it with everyone. Yes. A holiday fitness classes, that can be like cycle, it can be yoga, like whatever you're into mm-hmm. for working out. I feel like a lot of studios do have those options around the holidays. So that's definitely a way to keep it fun. I also would suggest making it more fun by wearing like a cute set or something. Like maybe a festive set, maybe something red, something green. I feel like there's a lot of companies out there that are getting like holiday patterns out and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I find that wearing a workout set just makes me want to go to the gym 10 times more because like if you look cute like you're gonna want to go you know when I go in like my sweatshirt I'm like oh I don't want to do this right now Mm -hmm. but if I put on like a cute matching set I'm like all right Reese like I'm like oh I look good and like it makes me want to like have a good workout because like I feel good and I want to get the workout going you know what's your like go-to workout clothing brand i really like lululemon which is like very basic and i feel like they don't have that many patterns but Mm -hmm. i really just value like the quality quality. because i find that all of my other stuff like doesn't hold up as well Mm -hmm. and the leggings are like squat proof and the sports bras like really hold up like my 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 girls (laughs) girls i think set active is some a cute brand that i've seen they have a lot of like not very well known brands out there like that i just see on like instagram and stuff too that have like just such cute patterns i've been really liking the free people um like fitness line that they're doing now like wait I, i haven't seen that it's so cute they have I need just, like look. really cool colors. So yeah, just like treat yourself to a cute little workout yeah. set. Go to a fun little festive workout class mm-hmm. and you're going to be like yeah. feeling so good. Yeah. <laughs> and like I think you could find like cute sets on like Pinterest and stuff like that too. Or like even yeah. they probably already have Christmas workout playlists. So you could just look those up on Spotify yeah. and Apple and just make it fun. Make it enjoyable. Mm-hmm. Romanticize it. Like we yep. said, maybe make a vlog. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, I'm running. I'm like going to the gym. <laughs> Another suggestion would be outdoor walks. The neighborhoods are so like cutely decorated right now. So even if you're just, you know, just wanting to get some movement in, just going for a walk, bundling up. I know it's mm-hmm. cold, but it's always so nice to just walk around at this time of year. And yeah, the fresh air feels the good. House. It honestly does. Like mm-hmm. once you get out there, it feels so good. Even if there's any sort of like charity or like themed walks going on, like in your town too. Like I yeah. feel like that's a good way to like help out at this time of year, but also yeah, stay active. That's a really good idea. Yeah. yeah. And it doesn't have to be like a whole like marathon, you know, right. like, like walk I'm not around your block. The marathon, yeah, but <laughs> literally walk up and down the street and call it a day. Like it doesn't have to be like a whole extravagant thing, but like just like that, like 10 or 20 minutes of moving your body is going to make you feel so good, mm-hmm. especially with the fresh air. For me personally, like that energizes me mm-hmm. so much. I feel like so energized after the gym. I'm not like tired after the gym. Yep, me too. So I just love to get the movement in. People don't really see working out as like that kind of aspect. I feel like they only really see it as like. I'm working out to look good, Mm -hmm. but it literally changes your day. Like if I go to the gym in the morning, I have such a productive day after because I already got one thing done. I have so much energy from it. Like I'm like, let's just keep going, you know? Mm -hmm. So it just like really boosts your mood and energizes you. And there's so many additional benefits other than just looking a certain way. Right. Keeping things fun and festive. What is your favorite holiday little guilty pleasure movie? Home Alone. Oh my God. One, two, and three. Like, two, probably like the best. It's just like been like a family tradition, honestly. Mm -hmm. Like, my family just, we all love the movies and it's like brings us closer together by watching it. So that's what I find is like the best part of it is like getting to watch it with my family. And I just like, like the plot. I think it's funny and like, it's iconic, you know? Yes. What about you? Okay. I put two down. One was Home Alone 2. That is the best one by far. It's so good. Like, you could just watch that over and over. And I think not I need get to watch it. it. We yes, like, like tonight. Tonight, like come <laughs> over. I'll bake the cookies. You bake, and I'll put <laughs> and them. We're gonna watch it. <laughs> the other one that I put down is Elf, because that is an actual like tradition movie with my dad specifically. He just like 
he is elf like i don't know how <laughs> else to say it but like he quotes every single line in that movie he's just so goofy just like what's his name what is his name Buddy. buddy buddy oh my god but i was also trying to think of his real name but yeah but it's buddy <laughs> buddy the elf guys <laughs> buddy the elf <laughs> he's honestly buddy the elf but we watch that every christmas eve because i spend christmas eve there and it's just another one that it's like every it's time tradition. i'm just gonna laugh at it like, yeah it's just awesome and then it just like reminds you of your dad reminds you of your family mm -hmm. so it just brings all the good vibes in it does for sure yeah those are two good yeah. ones so this is a long winter break for us what are some ways you're gonna take advantage of the long break so specifically for this break, this doesn't apply to like the other breaks we've had in the past, but I'm going to use the time to prep for abroad mm -hmm. because it's going to be a long four months and I need to really get myself not just physically prepared, but mentally prepared. Yes. So, and financially. <laughs> in all other categories. All, all other aspects. <laughs> so I think I kind of am going to use the break by getting myself mentally prepared first and foremost, working with my therapist on my anxiety, just because I do have, I'm very excited about abroad, obviously. And like, it's all I can think about, but there is a little bit of stress around it just because I have anxiety and I'm nervous about just how I'm going to tackle it there. Yeah. It's, uh, it's a lot. It's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Big um, step we're taking. Yeah. We're, we're going to Italy, baby. Like we're going far. It's definitely going to be an adjustment. Also preparing like what I'm going to pack. Mm -hmm. Like what the heck does someone bring to live for four months in a country? Like I, I, don't I know. know. There's so, so much to think about. So I'm really glad we have a long winter break. Me too. To just like figure that out. That's me like too. top of my list too. Yeah. Specifically, I want to like really work on a capsule wardrobe, like mm -hmm. stable pieces and really making sure that I'm packing like only the necessities because I tend to overpack. Mm -hmm. When I went to Greece over the summer, I was literally gone for two weeks and my bag was 62 pounds. <gasps> like that's what? Me, I overpack too. And we're going to be shopping so much there. I so. Know. Like There's a really, really good Zara. To, I know. Oh, I'm so excited. Stop. <laughs> so we like really need to be strategic and yeah. plan what we're packing. Yeah. I also want to like learn a little Italian if I can. Yeah. yeah. Like, that would be great. That would like, be great. Take for on sure. a little hobby during the break. Mm -hmm. Are you taking an Italian class there or no? I don't think there. I'm, I'm taking like an elementary Italian class, but I, I would like to go into it with a little bit of terminology. You yeah. know, like obviously I know like ciao, but like, like I want ciao, wanna, ciao <laughs> but like I want to know a little bit more than that. Italians don't really speak like there's a lot of people that speak English there. That's why I'm like not too worried about yeah. it. But Which yeah, is I'm kind of to be like, kind of conversational. Like I wish that like it was like only Italian, like I know. you know, but like, like I want to be fluent. I know, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's a good one. I we could use like Duolingo. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to get myself in a place where like I feel my best going abroad just mm. physically especially after the holidays obviously like I'm probably gonna eat a lot of junk which I'm totally okay with and I've prepared myself for that and I know that I deserve that and want to do that mm -hmm. but I do want to get back into the gym before we go abroad just so I can feel my best when I'm going there you know going with a good mindset not only looking good, but feeling good. Another thing I want to just take some time to do is like save up money if possible, like work a little bit during the winter break mm -hmm. because, you know, I want to have the best time in Italy yeah. like be able to just spend my money and not be worrying about it. Like mm -hmm. just fully enjoy my time physically, mentally, financially need to be in a good place. This is like kind of a more personal one, but catching up with my photography business, sending out all my contracts before I go for the grad season, making sure everything's booked and ready. My Instagram's updated. Like I want to go with a clean slate of every, like not have anything to do with it there because obviously I do want to continue to do photography there. And like, I want to take pictures with my friends and stuff, but I'm not going to be running a full-time business there. Like it's going to be hard because I'm going to be in Florence. Mm -hmm. So I really want to take care of all that stuff before make my money up mm -hmm. so I can treat myself. Like I'm planning to yes. ball out literally. Oh yeah. No, same. <laughs> yeah. Going along that, like my personal little podcast too. Like I want to just have a ton of episodes prepped for you guys. So that's something else that I'm prioritizing over the winter break. If anyone wants to come on the podcast, just let me know because I, I really do want to film quite a few episodes mm -hmm. just to keep you guys Batch know, them up. Keep you guys all entertained while we're gone. In the loop, you <laughs> regulars. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Something else I always do for, like, the summer and for, like, winter is, like, make a bucket list of, like, just fun things. Like, make gingerbread houses and, like, go skiing or whatever. I've never gone skiing, but I don't know why I'm saying that. <laughs> go <Me neither>. ice <laughs> skating. Just, like, fun things like that. Obviously, like, I'll be working super hard around winter break, like I was saying, but 
finding time for all the fun stuff too and also like not only just like prepping ourselves for abroad but prepping like what i'm gonna do there like Mm -hmm. i want to know like what countries i want to go to like where i'm gonna be staying like kind of mapping out payment like how much is this gonna cost me to like fly everywhere every weekend when is my family gonna visit so kind of like i'm not gonna book everything because like I think most people, most people that I've got advice from, they've said to just like, wait till you're there to like book your weekend trips. Right. But I do want to have like a rough outline of where I'm going to go, what I want to see, make a bucket list. Yeah. And overall, just like how we were saying before, just catching up on time with family and catching up on rest. Mm -hmm. Rest is huge. This Mm -hmm. is, I'm going to use the break to catch up on rest for sure. Yeah. I feel like I haven't got enough sleep this whole semester. And we're going to be like, go, go, go Mm -hmm. in Florence. Yeah. Yeah, that's like something that's really stressing me out. Like, right. I <laughs> know. Like, how am I gonna nap during the day? We're, like, I can't. We're not gonna nap. We're not gonna. I'm nap. gonna look out the window and I'm gonna see Italy. I know, and, and I'm, I'm not like, gonna I have to be out there right now. <laughs> like, so that's something I want to prepare for too. Is like, yes. really get my sleep in before, because mm-hmm. sleep when you're dead, guys. Like, genuinely, <laughs> honestly. So we talked about this earlier a little bit, but I want to come back to it. What are some specific ways that you're dealing with seasonal depression? So, like I said. Waking up earlier is my biggest tip for sure. Just letting yourself have more daylight helps a lot just to feel like you have a full day again. Mm -hmm. I find that I really don't want to go to class when it's like dark out and cold. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, so I'm going to skip my class because I don't want to walk there. Mm -hmm. But that's not ideal. And that's not a way that you're going to have, you're going to be able to go through the semester successfully. Like you have to go to your classes. You have to learn. Like you're paying to learn, you know? So I think that, a way to kind of convince yourself to make it out the door and go to class is like make it fashionable layer like Mm -hmm. layering is cute get like some fleece Mm -hmm. leggings or something you know like it doesn't have to be like this treacherous like terrible walk like you can make it cute like get some cute earmuffs or some Mm -hmm. gloves or something like really layer and make it cute make it fun yeah romanticize it and yeah I would just say in general like trying to get outside even when it's cold and dark like plan things for yourself to look forward to at night where you can go out because just sitting in your room when it turns four o'clock like that's not how you're supposed to deal with seasonal depression yeah just remember that like this is a temporary feeling and everyone else is going through it too it sucks Mm -hmm. but eventually it's not going to be dark like this forever and you're going to get out of the seasonal depression like the same way you probably have in the past so just remember that you're not going to feel like this forever and it's going to pass and just focus on all the fun stuff that happens around the holidays just to keep you out of that depression like just distract yourself how can you be like depressed at such a good time of year Yeah, literally we've talked a bit about traditions i'm curious what traditions do you have that keep you excited for the holidays either old new traditions yes so every year we spend christmas eve at my aunt's house and it's so fun just because i don't get to see my family that much so when we do this it's like a huge big extravagant like everyone goes you know and she makes a really really good meal so mm. i love the the meal what's the lineup <laughs> it's meatballs lasagna mm. whole italian like dinner right up my alley i'm obsessed i'm so excited to eat that in florence it's Yum. gonna be so good oh my god then we do like a huge yankee swap which is so fun because i don't know it's just like i don't have to buy the gift my mom gets the gift for me to like put into it you know and then like it ends up being funny like people steal and like stuff like that it's fun and recently we started playing this game called left right center oh my god we play that at my dad's for friendsgiving it's so fun i love it yeah um i feel like there's a bunch of other games that we've played too but overall like just christmas eve in general i I tend to spend christmas eve more than like celebrate more on christmas eve than christmas day you know yeah Something that I do on Christmas Eve at night, my mom allows us to like open one gift, but it's always our Christmas pajamas because yeah. like we'll wear them to bed that night. And I just like get so excited for that. And it's like me and my sisters, we're all like matching pajamas. I love that. And it's just like so fun. We wear them all the next day. Like yeah. we're just comfy. But it's just like so fun to look forward to. Yeah, that's cute. We've just recently implemented that like the past like two years. We didn't used to do that, which is like so something my family would do. But my mom bought like us all like matching onesies, which is like so cute yeah. and fun. One year we had like matching reindeer yeah, onesies. Yeah. And like they're like genuinely cute. And like I like I wear them like even when it's not just Christmas. I know. So yeah. And one thing that I am so like I hate is spoiling gifts. But my both my sisters really love to know what they're getting for Christmas. Oh my God. And so they're always like just telling my mom exactly what they want, or they'll literally just like put their stuff in the cart for her to get which I'm like just the so opposite I don't even tell her what I want because like I just want surprises yeah like, that's how I am 
But Brooke has started to take over the Christmas pajama planning. Oh, my God. And she was like, Mom, like, you have to get these for the pajamas. Like, I don't care if I know what it is, but, like, you have to get these this year. And so I think this was, like, one or two years ago. But she got us, like, the White Claw Santa Claus, oh, like, so Oh, up. shut up. Which were honestly so cute. Oh, that's so cute. But I was like, Mom, you did not pick this yeah, out. Yeah, like, you're like, I know something's <laughs> up here. I know Brooke was up to this. Brooke did it. <laughs> no, yeah, like, she honestly gets such cute ones. Yeah, that's, I feel like that's a really cute tradition. I feel like most families do that. And, like, if you don't, you should, you know. Start it up. I'm doing yeah. that with my kids. Yeah, like, for that's sure. what I love about traditions. For sure. Is like, I'm keeping those You're going. passing them on, mm -hmm. for sure. Another thing is Christmas morning, we do a big breakfast at my house. And we always have cinnamon rolls. And Ooh. I, like only associate cinnamon rolls with Christmas literally <laughs> because like that's like really the only time of year I have them and when I don't have them on Christmas I'm like wait is it Christmas morning like what's happening what are the cinnamon rolls you know like I just <laughs> love a good cinnamon roll and my mom makes them really good if you put like mm. milk or whipping cream in them like it makes them like bigger oh and really God, good that sounds so and good. she makes really good pancakes and stuff so Aww. I really like the good I breakfast I wish I had that <laughs> <laughs> we just do pumpkin bread on um Thanksgiving morning mm. that's like I associate pumpkin bread with Thanksgiving for that's that cute. reason have you ever tried it with chocolate chips in it oh my god no it's really good Stop. i really like it uh, last christmas we did like christmas cocktails and my Ooh. sister made pistachio martinis <gasps> so, so good, good. so Stop. good so i really hope she makes them this year again i feel like there's a bunch of other ones you can make too like prob there's probably like a christmas sangria or something mm -hmm. i've seen like sugar cookie yeah. martinis Ooh like oh i know that would be really i good. feel like with like the festive christmas drinks we don't really have any sort of tradition but we usually do make like mm -hmm. something every year yeah like, change it up i know which is i fun. want to like get into a tradition where like everyone makes a drink and like you like bring it out yes, and try it. Like, I did that once like, with my friends. Yeah, like I've seen that with your friends, but like, I don't know, I feel like that'd be fun with my parents. It's like, so fun. <laughs> I know. Yeah, like it's never too late to start traditions mm -hmm. either. Other than that, just like decorating our tree and like decorating the house, like that's just things we do every year and like look forward to, which I love. Um, do you guys do that as a family? Yeah. Cute. Usually, like we used to do it super late, but we started doing it like right after Thanksgiving. So I love that because like yeah. I'm still home. And we usually put ours up the day after Thanksgiving too. Yeah, I kind of wish it was sooner. I'm not gonna lie. I know. Like I want it right now. Yeah, <laughs> like I've seen like influencers on TikTok and they put theirs up like literally the day after um, Halloween. Halloween. I know That's it crazy. is like everything <laughs> Christmas is like coming out so much earlier. Yeah. Which um, I kind of love. You know. In old tradition, I don't really do this anymore, but we always did like a big photo shoot for Christmas cards every year. So And cute. I would always cry because I was like such a stubborn kid and could not like stand still for pictures for so long. <laughs> and I was just like such a brat. There's like one year of Christmas photos where I'm just like crying and happy. Oh my God, I need to see that. <laughs> so those are cute. That's but funny. no, we that was like fun. We would all like dress up and yeah, that's take a cute, photos. That's a cute and one. whenever we still get Christmas cards, we hang them all along like my yeah. railing mm -hmm. so that's like a tradition too i know i love i love hanging up the christmas cards yeah us. that's cute we usually we try to send out a christmas card every year but sometimes like we don't have a really good picture so yeah. like sometimes we like we reuse in the same picture <laughs> over and over again like we've never really done like a big photo shoot which like is so surprising because like, yeah. i really have a photography like, business <laughs> we're gonna end off with a fun question can you share a good memorable christmas day or holiday story i have a couple okay so when I was younger, we used to track Santa mm -hmm. every Christmas Eve. Well, this yes. isn't Christmas Day, but this is Christmas Eve. But it was, like, genuinely the highlight of my night. It, same, like, literally. Did the same thing. We would track him on the computer, and I, like, actually thought that he was there. Like, literally. <laughs> and it was just the best thing ever because I'm, like, with my siblings, and we're like, oh, my God, he's coming. Like, you know, yes. like, so excited about that, which is just, like, so, so cute looking back. And, like, I hope – do they still have that, like, I for kids? I hope so. Because, like, I feel like it's cute. ruined for kids. Yeah. Kids, don't listen to I this Don't pop. listen to this one. <laughs> um, Skip. <laughs> Skip. <laughs> also, Elf on the Shelf. <gasps> Same. I loved my Wait, Elf on the Shelf. Wait, name? Because mine was really stupid. Wait, I don't remember. Mine was Jerry. Jerry? Why? That's crazy. That was my pride and joy. Giant oh, yeah. Me. Coming home, finding it. Oh, my God. He wrote me a note. I'm going to die. You know, like. I have a good story about yeah. that. I'll tell that tell story. Tell it now. Now? Yeah. Wait, I'm <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my mom 
got the elf on the shelf, but she didn't know like how it actually worked. Yeah. So she's so stupid. She like has it in the box still. And it was just like on our doorstep and we got home and she and we were like, Mom, like, what is this? Oh and she's like freaking out. She's like, Oh, like Santa sent it. Like she just made up this whole story about you're supposed to like take the elf out and like place it somewhere yeah. in the house but she like has it in the box and like we're like unwrapping it and like you're like so mom funny what is my this? mom like is just not good with that stuff and so like even with just hiding the elf like some morning she would like forget and it, yeah. it wouldn't move and we'd be like mom no, oh my god move. no that's and so like, funny. Looking back now, it's funny because I just know how busy she is. Like, yeah. And how she just was like, shit, I forgot to move the that. elf. <laughs> like, it would just, like, be in the same spot for, like, days. That's so funny. Like, oh, my God. You were probably devastated. That. Oh, yeah. I would be bit. crying. Literally. <laughs> if it didn't move, I was like, great. Like, there was Christmas one day where it, like, <laughs> fell and I thought, like, the world was over. Oh, or when you would touch it and I'd be like, <gasps> oh, my God. It Christmas lost its over. joy. I have another story about... Christmas morning, I think I was in like fourth or fifth grade, maybe. I got a Kindle Fire. Stop. I got one for Christmas. And too. I was freaking out, guys. Like, it was like the end of the world, literally. <laughs> I was so excited that I got this Kindle Fire. And like, I was like using it to like with the games, taking selfies on it. Like, this Kindle Fire was my pride and joy. Like, that was like literally the only Christmas gift that I can remember getting all growing up because it was monumental for me oh genuinely <laughs> i don't know where that thing is i know it had like the cutest case and everything <laughs> this kind of goes along the lines of like the traditions we were talking about but something my mom did for us too i don't know if like you did this but she would make these like videos i don't know what website this was but like santa would like talk to you and like say your name oh it'd be like like hap merry christmas reese like, oh my god no and like we would like watch this like santa video oh i, I would don't be know i have out. like some weird memory of that but it was like the craziest thing i would be like genuinely freaking and it would out be like you asked for this for christmas like i i don't know how it works oh that's crazy but we would like sit around and watch the santa video like that's every year funny. like so random no i never got that unfortunately but i would like probably pass away if i saw santa talking like, to he me was, like really just saying like, my name i heard you want a candle fire <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my yeah. god <laughs> I could just sit here and talk about the holidays for forever. Same. Like, I'm getting so excited now for everything that's coming up soon. And I feel like this is the perfect time for this episode. I want to go bake right now. No, same. Like, <laughs> and watch oh Home Alone. God. No, I'm literally <laughs> doing that. Overall, just enjoy the holidays. I know it can be a stressful time, but just remember all the great things about it. Keep the traditions going. Yeah. Don't fall into the seasonal depression, the loneliness. Really just look at all the positives that come to this time of year. Yeah. Spend time with your family. Mm -hmm. Really just enjoy it. Take the time to reset before the new year. Yes. And have fun. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Any final thoughts? Thank you for having me, Reese. This of was amazing course. and fun. So and much fun. everybody should listen to Reese's podcast or be on it because this was so much fun and genuinely she's like the easiest person to talk to so this was so fun and thank and, you so much for having me listen to Sophia's I'm gonna be on it yep. very soon we'll go. be letting you guys know when she's on it yes <laughs> book a photo shoot with her and just go support her Instagram her TikTok she's awesome thank you <laughs> this was so much fun yes, it was. <laughs> leave suggestions guys comment let me know if there's anything specific you want me to talk about if you want to come on here thank you for listening thank you for watching Bye. Bye, guys.